How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. We just got word of the biggest day in 16 years. There are some crazy numbers coming in from overseas that I want to show you. Also, we're going to go through why Bitcoin might be falling right now. As you can see, falling down to 64,000. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. Also, there's going to be a link to Margex underneath the video. This is the time to be trading. I've been saying this. This is the time to put in your long positions before we inevitably break out to new all-time highs. I will apologize. The dog's barking upstairs, but we have some stuff being delivered. And the, the content is what's really important here. So... If you don't mind, we'll get past that little incessant barking, uh, but let's start with this. Obviously, we are falling down on Bitcoin. Uh, the price is down at 64000 from 66.4 just a few days ago. Keep in mind, almost all of this was just over the last 24 hours when we have seen a drop of about $1,500. All the way down, we did go down to about uh, $2,400 down uh, over the last day. Now, keep in mind, we haven't had much volume over the weekend. We didn't have ETFs buying. We could see some people taking profits or some whales trying to manipulate uh, a variable cornucopia of reasons. But keep in mind, we are bouncing off this one, this 200-day moving average. And if we continue moving up, I think this will still be bullish, right? We still moved to a higher high. Right? Even if we continued going down and we set a higher low, it would still be bullish on a uh, technical level. So I would not be too worried about this. Obviously, we saw a ton of inflows last week, 1.1 billion. So that can change the market quite qu quickly. As you can see, too, we have had days where it's been red. We've had a couple of red days and then we continued moving up uh, before. So I would not be too worried about this. Of course, you have to be ready with some cash on the sidelines if you are trading or if you want a dollar cost average, but not the worst idea in the world to dollar cost average and when the market looks this bullish and we actually did have the best day in in 16 years on a stock exchange here uh, today. But again, there's that link to Marjex underneath the video. You can trade with all different forms of collateral, but let's move on. We do have Alt 2 or Total 2 uh, moving down on the day as well. This is the entire crypto market cap minus Bitcoin. As you can see, it did put in a higher low recently, a higher high, but we did get like kind of rejected by this uh, previous line. Uh, we got a little bit higher, you can see, but uh, not a clean breakout above this trend line either. I know this trend line isn't perfect, but you can see just generally a downtrend. Lower highs, lower high, lower high. Uh, so hopefully we continue to break out this week. We do have some economic data coming later today. We have Jerome Powell speaking, and then we have some more jobs numbers like job openings, uh, ADP employment, initial jobless claims, non-farm payroll, et cetera, unemployment rate. Uh, that's all coming later this week. We start to see distributions coming with FTX distributing money to creditors. Hopefully some of that flows back into crypto and into the Bitcoin market as well. I think that would be quite bullish, obviously, for the price of Bitcoin as well, since they have $16 billion to distribute. Okay, this is what hit a new 16-year high today. Well, it had the best day in 16 years, I should say. Chinese stocks score the best day that they've had in 16 years. You can see a massive move up on the CSI China 300 index from 3,800 all the way up to 4,000. And if we look at a different uh, stock market indice there, the Shanghai Composite Index, up 8% on the day. That's a huge, huge day. <laughs> that is big. Uh, moving up from 31.50 to 33.50. Obviously, uh, there's a little bit of volatility, but you can see just a pretty steady climb up. Now, why is that? Well, we talked about last week, they have a lot of stimulus. They even have uh, some announcements that they're researching like a stock um, stabilization fund as well, where they're basically just going to pay companies to go buy pack their own shares, it sounds like. So that is a big day, and that's after a couple green days before it. You can see the stock market is up about 33% in, what, eight trading days? That is crazy, crazy. 
crazy volatility, crazy gains. Um, this is after it hit a very low point on the last 52 week. Let's actually look here. You can see hit new lows there. And that was after uh, hitting new lows around February ish, but then just massive rally up. Now it's up on the year. So you can see what stimulus does to a stock market. Now, this is kind of a tale of two cities. If you look at Japan, the Nikkei index is down 4.8%. Over the last six months, down 5%. Year to date, it's up 14, but you can just see it's having a rough time here today compared to Japan, uh, compared to China where they're stimulating. So I don't know, maybe some countries will be watching this and saying, hey, you know, these are two countries that are taking a bit of a different stance. Obviously, Japan raised by a quarter point, so they're making things tighter. China is stimulating, making things looser. And you can see how it's reflected in the confidence of the stock market. And uh, you can see how it's affecting the stock market just in general. So yeah, I think we are, I think we're in store for uh, some more stimulus in the future. I think there's going to be more quantitative easing. Right now, there's not a ton of news uh, on Bitcoin, not a lot of uh, companies announcing anything, not a lot of ETFs, but it is just a bit of a slower Monday, I think, with people coming back to work. And keep in mind, too, this is the last day of the quarter, so there might be more news in the next few days as companies you know, unveil stuff for the next month, for the next quarter, etc., We also have some big accounting changes coming as well in the fourth quarter which will allow companies to label Bitcoin or um, record Bitcoin not as an intangible asset, but uh, they'll actually be able to mark it up. So how it's how it works right now is if you buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and then it falls down 30% and then goes up 60%, you have to just show that loss. So you'd have $700 of Bitcoin. And then when it goes up, you can't even show that as a gain either which is kind of frustrating for a lot of companies, uh, including companies like MicroStrategy. And it stops some companies from wanting to show that because it just would look bad on uh, their quarterly reporting, right? And a lot of explanations all the time. So that does change in this next quarter, which will be really exciting. Let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Of course, you know, a little volatility uh, might scare some people, but uh, obviously we're in this for the long term. I did post a poll recently just showing when people were considering selling some Bitcoin, I said, if Bitcoin goes to 150,000 in the next year, will you sell nothing, sell 20% or less, 20 to 50, 15 to 90, or 90% or more? The majority of people said sell nothing. Then it's pretty even here between 20, like just selling anything between 20% less, 20 to 50%, and 50 to 90. And then a lot of people saying that they'd sell pretty much everything or everything as well. So kind of interesting, the poll results there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, if you want to trade Bitcoin, if you want to trade crypto, there's that link to Marjex. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.